Porta! Rebooting the blue or not a little. I know you're here. This is bullshit. What the hell was that? Oh, it's on! Thank you. 
yourself. Turn up, you're dead. Get some motherfucker! 
Hey. Just let me know. Take a look. When you turn up, you're dead. Fucking coward hides. What do you think that was? No need to hide. It'll all be over soon. There you are. You
You're blocking my light, man. <laughs> Good neighbors crazy. Thefts, murders, worse. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. Escape? What do you mean? Reliving old memories. Like Thanksgiving, 2071. Mom made a 12 pound turkey. And then we all listened to the Silver Shroud versus Captain Cosmos. Even Pa was there. You ever listened to the Silver Shroud? That's what we need. No matter how bleak things got, he saved the day. What can you tell me about the Shroud? He's from the radio shows. I've listened to all 419 episodes. And the holiday special. He's the best. Better than Grognak and Man to Man combined. My family and I used to listen to every new episode. You mean when they first aired? How? The last broadcast was hundreds of years ago. So, I'm a time traveler. I just got back from visiting George Washington. Now you're just playing with me. Though that would be pretty neat. You know what would be even neater? What if the Silver Shroud was real? With his black trench coat and gleaming silver submachine gun? I got a plan to bring him to life. So we can fight bad guys and give the rest of us a symbol of something better. Sure, Kent. You have a plan, all right. You really gotta rain on this guy's picnic. I know how it sounds. I've built my own custom machine gun. Even better than the one in the show. But to make this work, I still need the most important piece. The genuine Silver Shroud costume herself. And they actually got one here in Boston. They made it for the TV show. Will you help? I might do it, if you make it worth my while. I can give you some caps up front. Just promise she'll help me. Do you really need the costume? With the gun, I'm just another armed hooligan. But if the Silver Shroud came to life and helped people, it would give everyone hope. I'll get the costume for you. You're gonna do this? For real? Before the bombs fell, they were filming the Silver Shroud pilot over at Hubris Comics. So that's where you'll find it. You're the best. Memory Den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Hey, Irma. Oh, enjoying yourself in Good Neighbor? It's a heck of a town, ain't it? Sweet Pip-Boy, brother. You hold on to that. Hey. Free for the taking.
nice. Got it.
feather duster in, say, what, a hundred years, and this place would be right as rain. Hell yeah. here for every situation hunting protection cold-blooded murder hot-blooded murder I'll take a look sure each weapon tested on someone who deserved it what's up I got your costume, Kent. And some other goodies you might like. There she is. Pretty as the posters. The Silver Shroud costume herself. And memorabilia, too? Here's something else. Together with my gun, everything's all set. What are you planning next? I'm still working that out. Some details I want to run by you. Well, after you give me the costume, that is. Here you go. After all these years, the Silver Shroud is born again. But 
There's just one problem. I'm just not Silver Shroud material. I could be Rhett Reinhardt, or, or his butler, Jarvie Blake. But the Shroud is strong, capable. That's probably for the best. Me wearing a suit is probably a terrible idea. But you up for being a Silver Shroud? You're just like him. Except you probably haven't been in a blimp shot down by mobsters. If I go along with this, I could use a little extra. If it'll get you to help, sure. I, I, I may be able to scrounge up a couple of things. Looks like I get to be the Shroud. The costume and gun are yours. So you patrol good neighbor's streets, and I'll call in any crimes on my radio station. Here's some calling cards, I guess. When you dispatch justice, leave them behind. That way, everyone knows the Silver Shroud has returned. Time to fight crime! Nice pit boy. Would you kill to get that, huh? to hang out in the lobby all day again or are you actually going to go down and do some work being available to the customers is work it's not all about cooking chems claire it's not all about sampling those chems either maybe if you stopped using you could focus what where's the fun in cooking it if hey you there. ain't using you're new around good name, if i'm not mistaken what do you think of the place it's changed a lot since the last time i was here been here before well Good neighbors definitely come up in the past few years. Mostly since Hancock took over. Name's Rufus. I do repairs around here. Keep the robots running, sell a bit of scrap, that sort of thing. I'm usually here or drinking that swill Charlie slinging at the third rail. Looking for parts? I also might have a job for you if you're interested. What's the job? Don't know if you've had the beer down at the third rail, but I swear Charlie must have found it in a sewer. I found this hollow tape while doing repairs at the Rexford. Delivery notice for a brewing machine. Pre-war. Thing is, it was never delivered. Well, with all the bombs and all. Done some asking around, and I think it might still be intact. Which is where you come in. I assume this is a paying job. Of course. How about 200 caps and some of the beer? Think you can get a hold of that brewing machine for me? This isn't exactly the safest neighborhood. What about hazard pay? Fair point. 300 caps, plus beer. Are you gonna take the job? What's the catch? The usual. Place it's in as an empty. Might have to shoot your way in. Think you can get a hold of that brewing machine for me? I'm in. Let's do it. Great. So, the brewing machine is in the basement of an old bar called the Shamrock Tap House. When you leave town, make your way around east till you hit Atlantic. Great big grain sign. Bring it back here when you're done. 
Before you even start, let's get to the point. We have rooms, one room specifically. Payment due up front. Can you tell me a bit about this hotel? Oh, why do they always have questions? The Hotel Rexford used to be a grand establishment. We even had guests that didn't throw up all over the floor. But now the only people who come by are looking for somewhere to nurse a hangover or shoot up chems. So, still want a room? Who owns this place? Mr. Morowski. Oh, you should have seen him in his day. This place used to be flowing with high-end chems, beautiful clients, and oh, the parties. But now he just stews in the back office and disgraces his parents' memory. I swear, if they knew how far he's fallen, they'd die all over again. So why don't you rent a room before I get worked up? Tell me more about this Morowski character. Oh, why bother? He's worthless. The other big names caught him with his pants down, and now he just has this ratty hotel. That's the way good neighbor operates. The strong make it to the top, until someone stronger kicks them down. Now are you buying this room, or not? Tell me a bit about yourself, Claire. I have been working in this hotel for over 40 years, and this is not how I imagined spending my retirement. Now are you done being nosy, or are you getting a room? Let me think it over. Make up your mind next time. Look, I know it's an open door, but it's like a philosophically open door, okay? Get the hell out. Hey, Morowski. You want a room? Claire runs the desk. Give her something to do besides breathing down my neck. What? No, it can't. It, 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 it's you from Sanctuary Hills, right? Wait, are you from vault -Tec? I am vault -Tec. Twenty years of loyal service, and now look at me. I wasn't on the list, but you, look at you. Two hundred years, and you're still perfect! How? How's that possible? You don't know? They didn't tell you? Tell me what? What is it? How did you get through these last two hundred years untouched? The vault had these pods that froze us in place. I only thawed out recently. What? vault never told me that. Unbelievable. Well, I had to get to the future the hard way. Living through the filth, the decay, and the bloodshed. Look at me. I'm a ghoul. A freak. I'm so sorry. I didn't know this would happen. You know, you're the only other person I met from before. I, uh, I... Oh, God. I've been so alone here. No Commonwealth settlement once a ghoul with 200 years of vault tech sales experience. Hey, you know, you could head back to Sanctuary. I'll come visit. I promise. Really? You... you will? Okay. I'll head over there right now. You promise you'll come visit, right? I'll see you there. Blue, you got a minute? Something up? Well, yeah, but it's nothing bad. Just... what you said about Nat. I've been going over it again and again in my head, and what you said was right. Family's too precious. What kind of life is she gonna have if I never go near her again? It's just... Sometimes it feels like the only things I've got in life are Nat 
and the paper. Having someone I can count on, someone like you, it's meant a lot to me. Not a lot of people want to hang around with the nosy reporter. Yeah, but you're my kind of nosy. <laughs> you're the exception. I haven't exactly made a lot of friends in this career. I just wanted to write the things I thought were wrong. And when Nat and I first got to Diamond City, there was a lot of wrong. Crooked guards, lousy infrastructure. <laughs> there was a hole in the exterior wall that was patched over with a bookcase. One bookcase. That's it. I started the paper more as an act of desperation than anything else. It turned out I wasn't the only one who wanted things to change. After the first couple of editions, people may not have agreed with what I said, but everyone was listening. Still, a lot of work to fix that town. Oh yeah, but it's come a long way. When that first edition hit the stands, I felt like I'd finally done something worth doing. But afterwards, things... things changed. People didn't want to talk the way they used to. It seemed that overnight I'd gone from being Piper, friend and confidant, to Piper, the nosy snoop. A lot of folks, they haven't treated me the same since. I started to feel like the only person I could count on was my little sis. You can count on me, Piper. I know I can. You're not afraid of me like everyone else. I was sure that the paper would be the best thing I ever did in my life, but... Being here with you now... Now I don't know. I've needed someone like you in my life for a long time, Blue. I just never expected I'd actually get them. So thank you... For being the friend I can count on. It sounds to me like you're interested in becoming more than just friends. Oh, I... I mean... <laughs> Well, I'd be lying if I said I never thought about you that way. Not that I'm always thinking that way. It's just... Blue. <laughs> I'm loud and pushy and constantly getting in over my head. Why would someone like you ever want someone like me? You don't need to be flawless, Piper. You're perfect for me. Perfect, huh? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a new one. Well, hmm. Well, I think you're perfect too. <laughs> Goodness, Blue, I... I don't know what to say. You're everything I could ever ask for. Come on. Let's not keep the world waiting. Oh man, someone new! You need some jet, man? Home brewed? Reasonable prices? You have any work? Yeah, actually, you might be perfect. You know the gunners, right? The high end mercenaries? Well, a few of them were talking about scavenging around that old hallucinogen building. I mean, just think about that name. There's gotta be some shit there that's out of this world. You get me something, I pay you 200 caps. Your offer is a little low, Fred. All right, let's make it 250. Not good enough. You said there's already a crew of mercs there. I did say that, didn't I? How about 300? All right, Fred, we have a deal. You're the best, the absolute best. That a silver shroud costume? Hey, uh, no judgment. But ain't that a kid that show? That a silver shroud costume? <laughs> hey, ain't no judgment. What's with the fancy duds? Looks expensive. 
Might be I've found a new friend. Just going to waste otherwise. Rumor is you killed Miss Selmy. That true? Selmy? Yeah, I killed the bitch. And her whelp, too. Shouldn't have bothered they barely had two caps between them. Your crimes have gone unpunished for too long. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, nothing a few bullets won't cure. You mess with me? Them. Holy moly, the silver shroud in the flesh. Oh no, death is coming for me. <laughs> hey. Oh geez, you ain't one of them Diamond City types, are you? Peace, brother. Subroutines, micro brewers. Hey, buddy, start up some recipes for you. Complete dispensing sample for approval by technician. How would you describe the testing sample provided? Mm. <sighs> cold and refreshing. Do you know how long it's been since I had cold beer? Very good. I appear to be operating at an optimal level. Shall we commence delivery to the Hotel Rexford? Yeah, sure. Beginning transit operations to Hotel Rexford.
other journalists. Lou, we're not alone. will be Ugh. <sighs> 
gone. Just like that. Guess we showed them. Hancock, he's the mayor around here. Elected by himself, accepted by everyone. Third rail. Yeah. Greetings, new friends. I am the Rufus. What the buddy, heck is this thing? But you can just call me Buddy. I Good to see you again. Here to provide entertainment. Oh and man, I that's awesome! Libation. I'm gonna store my vodka in this. Just get it set up over at the bar and out of my doorway. Commencing normal operations. Greetings, buddy. Care to wet your whistle? Hey, Rufus. Or do you hey, require a lap? Is even better than I was hoping for. Here's your money. What do you have? Let me know if you want to trade. Hey. Good Where to? to? Again, here for <clears throat> Oh, you staying with us today? Renter assumes no expectation of privacy or safety for you or your belongings. Gonna pass. Mark another in the moocher column. How's it going? 